I'm here today at Santos Beach uh, chatting to Sasha Dines and uh, Dr. Enrico Gennari from Oceans Research who recently did a stranding simulation to train volunteers. Um, could you guys just briefly explain uh, what the procedure was? So the procedure for any stranding, um, if it's seen by the member of the public first, is we recommend that the member of the public phones one of us guys, so either the NSRI, <coughs> Um, smart group or ourselves. What we recommend is that they set up a, a barrier around the animal to reduce the stress on the animal and the noise on the animal, so around 20 meters, or as far as it takes to keep the animal calm. If possible, create some shade for the animal um, and a wind barrier with a parasol or a windbreaker just to protect the animal a little bit. But what we do recommend is not to touch the animal. One of the first things that we do is we assess the situation. Um, when we assess the situation, we're looking at both the health and safety of the animal, also for ourselves and the responders. Um, once we assess the situation, we confirm whether the animal is alive or dead. That will directly inform what we do next. If the animal is alive, um, we then stabilise the animal. It's a mammal, so we just make sure that it's comfortable um, and um, okay. And then we do a health assessment for the animal. So a health assessment is looking at if it's sick, if it's injured, um, and also looking at the tide. And the weather, seeing if we can intervene, um, and all those though those things, it's quite an exhaustive list, and it takes a trained individual to go through that list appropriately. But um, once we've gone through that list and we've made an appropriate health assessment, that will then inform us whether we can refloat the animal if it's healthy enough, or if we should intervene, or if we should, we should let nature take its course, or even euthanize the animal. Dr. Janari, could you just please uh, explain what are the key elements to a successful? Um, citation. Recently. We don't necessarily, we are not necessarily going to rescue the animal. That's one thing the public needs to be and to understand very clearly. We respond to a strain and the proper response could mean in the for the benefit of the animal in terms of welfare and for the safety of the uh, responders that sometimes we might have to decide to euthanize the animal or even not do anything which is most likely the most difficult choice of all but and let, and let nature take its course so rescue is not necessarily what we aim for from our art yes but however sometimes it's not the best interest for the animal and for the responders mm -hmm. so i think the elements in what we need for a good response are trained personnel, so people who are trained in the same, from the same page almost, and all on this agreement together. And then you have the trained equipment, so the appropriate equipment that everyone knows how to use and is confident using. And then also um, a collaborative approach, so communication, teamwork between all the organisations involved and the authorities. Uh, Sasha, tell me a little bit about the equipment that you used. Um, it was sponsored. Mm -hmm. What is the track record of that specific stuff used worldwide? So um, the reason why we have the equipment in the first place is all around the world strandings occur and people like the Coast Guard and other well-meaning organisations have used kind of ropes, pulled by the tail, dragged these animals back out to sea. And I think it's really important that it's recognised nowadays, it's quite standardised, that this is inappropriate. Um, so this, the equipment that we use, the pontoon and the stretcher system, um, it was developed in New Zealand. They, in Project Jonah, they were the very first strandings organisation to come up with, they recognised that there was needed to be something else, there was something else that this could be done better and so they come up with this system. Then strandings organisations all around the world such as British Divers in the UK, Mars in Canada, they've adapted and taken on these this pieces of equipment, adapted it for their own use in their own topography in their own countries and for their own species that they use and it's kind of over the years been honed and it's actually a very standardised bit of equipment for strandings responses now. We have been trained by the group a group mm -hmm. called Mars in Canada that came here last year to train us and uh, some people from the municipality fire department to use this uh, specific equipment and uh, so Mars uh, this group uh, passed us uh, their knowledge and we're very grateful for that and also I have to say because we could only achieve uh, to get this equipment because it's very expensive we're talking almost about a uh, hundred thousand rand per pontoon that we achieved that thanks to a generous donation, a sponsorship from a, a, co, a group called Ocean Care based in Switzerland that recognized what we're trying to achieve here in, in South Africa, in Mossel Bay, and re, re, realized there's a very important thing and they put found, funding toward us. So we're very grateful to Ocean Care. What do you perceive as being the greatest challenges in a stranding situation? Uh, 
personally and in this area a lot um, the any kind of any stranding of uh, medium to large marine mammals the main challenge that I found is actually the emotion that run high so people with big hearts they always try to, 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 to help and sometimes the most difficult things is actually to take a step back and we had examples in a few years ago in Gribrak with a large humpback uh, whale people that try to push by hand this 12 13 meter whale and they almost got squashed by the tail of that animal throughout the decision that we follow that is not our, our decision is based on very peculiar and, and precise uh, points to, to assess Sometimes the best thing for the animal is to actually either let nature take its course, which means doing nothing, or to euthanize that animal. And that is difficult because people see these two actions as uh, regrettably wrong. And there's a lot of emotion and tension, and that's why we aim with this interview, with the training that we do, we try to do often, to get more people, not just about train, but informed. What about the road ahead? Uh, what do you see for future training, other um, operations, practice sessions? Mm -hmm. I think it's really, really important, you touched on it there, continuous training. This isn't a static science, you know. The science itself is continuing, how, to, how we respond. This is a network of people all around the world and there's unified strandings networks. Every country has their own unified stranding network. We develop ourselves, um, we keep training. Those who have already been trained, we need to repeat that, um, hone those skills, such as we did last weekend, practice that um, whenever we can. And also expanding that training to other volunteers, members of the public who want to engage. The, the, the plan I had, the, the long term I had, uh, I, I, I would like this to be not just um, a flower that, that blooms in, in a, a spring. I want a, a, a long term uh, happening here in Mossel Bay. So at the moment, the stranding equipment that we have, we are able to deal with animals up to seven meters. So, um, and the last two humpback whales that we got uh, were more or less around 9-10 meters. So obviously we cannot use that equipment. So the plan I had is in next year, in 2018, to make officialized with the Department of Environmental Affairs, with the help of uh, SMART, with the help of NSRI, a local stranding network for the Mossel Bay area. That is the, my 2018 goal. Then 2019 and 20 to expand and basically copy this approach to other areas that already have shown very good interest in terms of wilderness, Plattenberg Bay, Naisna. So to have a stranding network for the garden route area that again is not there. And at the same time, while we show that we're developing as a com community, also go back to our founders, for, for which we're very grateful already, but go back and showing what we are achieving, but what we can achieve further is to get more stranding equipment so that we could deal with animal up to 14, 15 meters, which are the average whale size that we can get here, yeah. but expanded in geographically, but also in terms of possible equipment that we can really address all the stranding situation in the area of Mossel Bay and the Garden Route area.